Hello and welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for October of 2023. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kiel Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. And I'm Julia Mijas and I'm in San Francisco, California. Let's take a look at what's happening this month. Well, hey there, Pisces. I want to start out this horoscope by talking about Pluto. Pluto is going to turn direct this month, which is great news because while Pluto is retrograde, and he does spend several months every year retrograde, if you're having a Pluto transit, that is the time when it's usually at its most difficult. That's when the process is deepening. That's when you really feel like you're kind of lost in the dark places of transformation and metamorphosis. And so when Pluto turns direct, which he's going to do on October 10th, <clears throat> that is when we begin to feel like we're coming out of the woods. There's a special extra part about this though too, which is that Pluto is finishing out his 15 year journey through Capricorn. You see him here at 27 degrees of Capricorn. He's got only three degrees to travel to finish out Capricorn. And then by the time the new year starts, he is gonna be in a whole new sign and beginning his 20 year journey through Aquarius. While Pluto has been in Capricorn, he's been testing and transforming us around themes of career and authority. This can mean that we feel like our own authority has been questioned or that we need to change our relationship with the authority figures in our lives, whether that's like, you know, the police or government figures or your boss. And so a lot of this stuff has been going on in the deeper layers of you know, of our unconscious selves, which is, you know, where Pluto lives. He's the Lord of the underworld, right? So he's been working on all this stuff and only occasionally peeking his head up above the ground, you know, like a groundhog <clears throat> and reminding us that, you know, big changes are afoot underneath the surface. So um, around October 10th, 11th, when Pluto turns direct, we can look forward to the end of Pluto's motion through Capricorn, and that means your 11th house. This is a house of community, of tribe, of friendships. <clears throat> and you know, Pisces, you've got Capricorn on the cusp of this house, which might mean that you've always had a tendency to have friends who are older or younger than yourself. You've never really gotten on with your peers so much. <clears throat> and so, you might have friends who are of like authority figures for you. And this Pluto transit along your 11th house has really transformed your friendships. You might, if you look around, you know, sort of at the territory of your friendships, you might even feel like in the last 15 years, all of your friends have changed. Some of them you've just, you know, had to kick to the curb because those people were toxic. And other ones, have sort of emerged as the ones who will really stand by you through thick and thin. And it's been an important time. And, you know, wonderfully, it is coming to a close. Next thing I want to talk about is Juno. And here she is. She starts the month finishing out your sixth house and in the sign of Leo. Now, Juno is a social maven. She is an asteroid goddess of relationship, but different from Venus, although she and Venus are traveling together right now, <clears throat> she is more about committed relationships. So she generally refers to a marriage if you're in one or a committed partnership that you have. And um, she might have to do with a business partner or um, if you work in the kind of job where you consult with people or are consulted with, um, and you have like a client-based practice, or if you manage people in teams, Juno would refer to all of those things. So she starts out the month in the sign of leadership, which is Leo, and in your sixth house, which is a house of service. And if that sounds like an odd combination, it kind of is. But um, while Juno is finishing out your sixth house here in the first half of the month is a really great time for you to manage the people that work for you better or the people who work under you or if you do manage a team on the job this is a really good time 
for, <clears throat> for um, you know, displaying your leaderly glow and treating them in a way that is regal, but not arrogant. And so um, giving them high quality attention that you have to offer is part of that as well. So paying attention to the people who work under and around you in a way that lets them feel noticed and seen and having this be your management style this month is a really, really great way to go. <clears throat> Another thing you might do with Juno in the sixth house is to organize stuff with your spouse in, uh, in the life that you share. So clean the garage, clean the attic, organize the kitchen, um, organize the living room, do something to make your life together better in the way of organization. And that is a project that you can absolutely lead, Pisces. So then a little bit later in the month, <clears throat> we see that Juno moves on into the seventh house and joins Ju uh, Venus in the seventh house. <clears throat> now, Julia is gonna tell you about Venus very shortly, but, um, but I wanna say that while these two relationship ladies are here in the seventh house, this is really, really great for your relationships. And I will let her tell you more about that shortly. But, um, but I would say that this is a really great time for negotiating and finding a healthy balance in your relationship with your spouse or your business partner uh, after Juno moves into the seventh house. And that can really do a lot to mitigate uh, Juno and Venus in Virgo because I don't think either of these goddesses really loves to be in Virgo and it can lead to a, a relationship phase that's characterized by criticism, but it doesn't have to. Uh, next, I want to talk about Ceres. She's spending the whole month in Scorpio and that's uncomfortable because Ceres rules the sign of Taurus, which is across the way <clears throat> right here. So Ceres is in alien territory, and we call this her sign of detriment, Scorpio. And, um, and that's because Ceres, as a ruler of Taurus, is all about ownership and possession, such as, you know, the stuff that you own, the money that you earn, how you budget it, save it, spend it, the stuff that's yours, also your physical body and how you feed it and maintain it in a good way for health and longevity. <clears throat> Ceres in Scorpio struggles because Scorpio is a sign to do with sharing. And so it has to do more with intimacy. So rather than taking care of your body yourself, when Ceres is in Scorpio, you feel that you must um, share your body with your partner and um, and I would warn, um, don't have any sex you don't want to have while Ceres is in Scorpio. Um, but I would also say, don't engage in debt that you don't know how you're going to pay for later while Ceres is in Scorpio. And I would especially advise that because Ceres is in the very expansive ninth house where she actually loves to be. <clears throat> now, the great thing about Ceres in the ninth house is that the ninth house is a house of your belief system, and it's a house of expansion and growth of all kinds. And because this is a house of growth and expansion and beliefs, Ceres, being a goddess of money and wealth building, can expand on your beliefs of what you deserve. And that can help to support your expanding your earning power um, now or in the future. So this is a really great time to re-examine what do I think that I deserve and how can I feel that I deserve more so that I have the confidence uh, to evaluate myself higher and ask for more on the job and take a stand for that. So, um, and another caution that I would throw in here is that series in the ninth house can be a little bit spendy because if you feel uh, an overblown confidence in your earning power, not currently supported by your actual uh, wages or salary, then, um, then you could overspend while series is in the ninth house. Or you could find yourself living hand to mouth, spending money that you don't have quite yet. So watch out for that. 
Um, hey, Julia, what's up with Venus and Mars and Mercury this month for all those Pisces out there? Hey there, Pisces. Let's begin with Venus, the planet of love and beauty. She begins the month in your sixth house of work and service. So Venus, you know, it's a little uncomfortable in this house because she just wants to chill out, luxuriate and have fun. And the sixth house is all about being practical and service oriented. However, this can be a very useful time, especially if you uh, need to get some more order in your life, such as organize things in your house or run a bunch of errands and tasks because it means you'll be getting a little bit more fun from this kind of, you know, boring routine stuff than usual. And it's also a very helpful transit for your job, you know, getting a little bit more fun and pleasure at your job. It's sort of a happy worker bee transit. Then by the eighth, Venus enters your seventh house and she loves to be in this house, much more natural for her. Um, and when she's in this house, She's bringing more pleasure, harmony, and luck into your romantic relationships. So if you're currently in a relationship, then it's a wonderful time for just falling in love with your partner all over again. And if you're single, then it's a fabulous time to get out there and date. Uh, Venus in the seventh house means that you will draw more romance into your life. You know, Venus attracts things to her. So either your partner is going to be better looking than usual to you, or, you know, you're going to draw in some new people, um, especially if you're single. So that's also a, just a very fun transit to know about. Now, Mars, planet of action and activity, starts the month in your eighth house. This is a financial house. Mars is very driven in the eighth to try to get more money, to try to increase um, the financial structures in your life. So this house is all about your partner's income, uh, family inheritances. It's also about taxes, loans, mortgages, crypto, stocks, bonds, all that kind of stuff. Now, it's a good time for research because the eighth house also rules investigation, and it's it's a good time to try to into eighth house matters, but it might not necessarily like if you're applying for a loan or you're opening a new credit card, um, you know, this might not be the best time for it. You might want to wait until Mars is out of this house, which is going to happen on the 11th. Now, when after the 11th, Mars moves into your ninth house, um, this is a house of exploration. It's a house of expansion. It rules legal affairs as well as uh, higher education. So Mars in the 11th house is really driven to kind of expand itself in some way, maybe go on an adventure, uh, maybe go on a trip. Now, if you are going on a trip around this time, because Mars is a little conflict oriented, you know, you might run into some frustrations along the way with travel, uh, but you're still very motivated to do it. Um, if you're at school, you might not be seeing eye to eye with your classmates or your teachers, or maybe you get a grade or paperback and it really annoys you, um, but you do have a lot of energy for rewrites and uh, drive to learn more. So definitely make the most of this transit uh, by doing that. Mars in the ninth house can also be a bit of a tricky time with legal affairs. Um, so you might be more prone to getting tickets, you know, so try not to, you know, try not to park in the wrong spot, try not to speed, um, because that kind of stuff can definitely happen with Mars in the ninth. Finally, the Mercury, the planet of communication, begins the month in your seventh house. He's only there for about four days, but it's a good four days if you do need to hire a contractor for advice because Mercury here means that your mind will be stimulated um, through partnerships or through contractors. Uh, so really good idea to find someone to bounce your ideas off of the first few days of the month. Then Mercury moves into the eighth house um, where it's going to be for the rest of the month. Again, this is a house of research and investigation and money. So Mercury in this house is really good for financial planning, good for having conversations over money. Um, also good for strategizing about money and doing any type of research or investigation in your life. You know, your mind might be drawn to more of the taboos of life, you know, mysteries, um, mental health. You know, this could be a great time for talking to a counselor about any type of mental health stuff that's coming up in your life. Then by October 19th, Mercury conjoins the sun while direct. We call that greater epiphany day. It's a time of insights and revelations. And since this is happening in your eighth house, you could be having insights 
insights into finances like investments, uh, inheritances, credit cards, loans, or maybe you're having some insights into your own psychology um, or even into some type of research project that you're involved in. Hi, Jamie here. Horoscopes and moon videos are fun, but they don't go very deep, really. If you want depth and personal clues, you'll want to join our monthly live workshop where you can talk with a real astrologer about your own chart. This month's topic is undergoing Pluto transformations with power and grace. Because Pluto transits feel like a long, dark night of the soul, and psychological death and rebirth is hard for all of us. In the workshop, I'll explain how to navigate these biggest of all life's changes smoothly. This workshop is expressly for our Demigod Patreon subscribers who pay only $15 a month for access to live events like this one. It's easy to sign up at the Patreon link in the description below. I'd love to see you there. Now let's get back to the video. Well, eclipse season is upon us and the first eclipse, which is going to be a moon. That's just how it is. Eclipses are moons. First one is happening on October 14th. This is a solar eclipse in Libra, which lands in your eighth house. Now, eclipses show us our shadow. They're inherently uncomfortable because during eclipse, we have to look at stuff that we don't like to look at every day that we'd rather put behind us. And this is a solar eclipse, which means that we're going to show our shadow through how we behave. We are prone to taking actions that anybody could see that just kind of put it out there like good old Captain Obvious. Oh, I'm a bad actor. Oh, crap. Um, and you got to watch out for what house in your chart the eclipse is landing in. Now, another thing I want to tell you, though, first, before I explain the house, is um, that this is a releasing eclipse. And that's because the eclipsed sun is next to the south node. And so this is an eclipse in which we really need to focus on releasing bad behavior. And so when you see yourself behaving badly, maybe because somebody pointed it out, um, this is a really good time to just let go of that kind of bad behavior and, you know, go forth and do better in the future. So this eclipse is landing in your eighth house, which is a house of intimacy, of deep connection. It's a house of merging. I also call this the alchemical cauldron of change because it is a house of transformation and metamorphosis. So you might experience this eclipse in your intimate life, in your sex life, or in your financially intimate life, which is to say you might experience this eclipse relative to debt that you have or you know loans that you've taken out and um you know, so watch out definitely during this eclipse uh do not take any more debt on during this eclipse definitely definitely don't do that but also really have a care for your intimate relationships and the relationships where you share monies like perhaps a business partnership for example so um we're calling this one stop placating honesty heals and that's because the eclipsed sun is in libra and so the behavior might be placating behavior it might be about being too sweet too nice kind of saccharine trying to be fair but maybe overbalancing maybe being overly yielding uh giving away the farm that kind of thing so definitely watch out for that the um the north node in chiron i'll just give you a little clue um, the North Node and Chiron over here in your second house are suggesting that uh, because they're in Aries, that honesty is the way out of the painful situation of the eclipse. And I won't say more than that right now, but I would say you should definitely go over to our website, PandoraAstrology.com, and check out the monthly forecast page where uh, you'll see two videos about these eclipses and you can learn a lot more about them there. The second eclipse is coming up on uh, the 28th later on in the month, and that is a full moon lunar eclipse happening in the sign of Taurus with the sun opposite to it in Scorpio. Lunar eclipses are always full moons. They are full moons that happen near the nodes. 
So the eclipsed moon is very near the north node, making this an initializing eclipse. And so this eclipse is plugged into the future. And things that happen during this eclipse can lead to karmas that might need to be unpacked in the future. And that can be good karma. It doesn't have to be bad karma. You could set yourself up for good karma in the future during an initializing eclipse. Now, this is a lunar eclipse, which means that it is going to be more emotional and less actional. So it has a lot less to do with the actions that you take. That's the solar eclipse. And I talked about that already. It's going to have a lot more to do with the emotions that you feel and especially how those emotions get stirred up and how you handle the stirring up of those emotions. So this one we've also named, we've named it Release Ties, Lean Into Independence. And we've named it that because Moon in Taurus is, um, is very much about financial self-sufficiency and really physical self-sufficiency. Um, the moon is our emotional side. It speaks to our emotional needs. And when the moon is in Taurus, those emotional needs get tied to our physical and financial needs. And so what can be super satisfying when the moon is in Taurus is finding your way to financial independence and to, um, and to physical independence as well. And that can set you up for better future experiences and some good karma that you get to unpack later, like a present that you sent yourself in the future. Um, now, this moon is landing in your third house, which is a house of communication. So if, for example, you are in your 20s, just heading out into the world and, um, and establishing your own life, this moon could be a really great time to communicate with your family about you know that you are you, you're putting them on notice you're loosening the apron strings you're releasing the ties that have attached you to family and especially if some of those ties have been about uh, you know financial things that you get from your family but which may come with a little bit of you know control um that can be loving it can also be you know a problem for you as you uh, as you go out into the world. And this is a really great moon for releasing that stuff and just letting your family know, hey, I love you, but I'm doing my own thing now. I don't need your money. And um, and I'm gonna, you know, forge my way. So this is a really good moon for communicating that kind of stuff because the moon is here in the third house. Um, then the last thing I wanna talk about is the seasonal change. October 23rd, the sun changes signs and uh, moves on into the new sign, which is Scorpio. Now, the sun and really a cluster of planets have been spending the earlier part of the month here in Libra, occupying your eighth house and bringing a lot of preoccupation to those realms of intimacy, bondedness, psychological depth, transformation, connection, all of those have been really big themes in the early part of the month. And, um, and you may have been very preoccupied with how you can navigate those sometimes treacherous waters gracefully and graciously and with kindness and fairness, you know, because you have got a lot of Libra in this house and that makes perfect sense. But here at the end of the month, when the sun moves on into Scorpio, see that there are a bunch of planets here in Scorpio. And so there is now a new theme, which is the Scorpio theme, but also the realm of adventure and exploration and growth and expansion and, and travel even as, uh, as this ninth house fills up with planets. And, um, and so this is the time of the year when your, your mind and your heart um, turns to being the seeker. This is the time of the year when you ask yourself, what does it all mean? And as we go into the darker seasons and the light is going away, the, you know, we're headed more towards the solstice um, and away from the equinox, the nights are getting longer, the days are getting shorter, unless you live in Australia and New Zealand. But, um, but this is the season of, you know, the lengthening nights 
it is literally getting darker. And uh, this is the time for you to ask yourself, what does it all mean? You know, what does my life mean? And as things get darker, how, um, how do I, how do I live? You know, how do I find meaning in the darkness? And, um, and so this uh, whole season is good for that kind of exploration. The sun will be traveling along the ninth house and accompanied by several planets for much of its journey for about 30 days, starting on October 23rd. And this is just a really good time to shine the light of conscious awareness on your own belief system, which you may have derived from the religion of your childhood, or you may have cobbled it together on your own in your adulthood. Now is the time to look at it consciously, awarely, deeply, and ask yourself, does this belief system give me the resilience that I need? Well, that's all for today. If you love Pandora Astrology's free and informative horoscopes, then please do hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share our horoscopes with your friends. You can find out so much more about how this month's transits affect you in very personal timing in our monthly Patreon workshops. Find the link in the description below to get started. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye-bye.